Hello and welcome everybody to the Future of Product webinar about secret formula of product development efficiency. My name is Henry Hamela and I have with me Harry Pendolin here. Hello. And uh, short introduction to myself is uh, I'm a lead coach at the EFI Code, have been working with quite many different organizations on product development and in recent years quite a lot uh, uh, with like a leadership teams of different organizations and uh, thinking about like how to create uh, much better working product organizations overall and from, from there that that has like a quite often le led to the discussions about uh, efficiency in product development and and that's the reason we are now here talking about product development efficiency over overall but let's uh, have, have Harry have a word about himself and uh, yeah, thank you, Henry. Uh, we have known with Henry for already 20 years, and we have had a, quite a few good debates on what product development is, what product management is, and how those work together. And that's, a, I guess, a good introduction to the topic of the day, that the efficiency of product development. So my role here is to, to challenge Henry a little bit and then and I try to bring the, the business view or, or product management view on this efficiency discussion. Great to be here. Thanks, thanks a lot. And I, I hope everybody will appreciate. We will definitely had good discussions and hope to have some, some today. Uh, on our agenda, we'll go a bit through about product development efficiency, and then we go towards the, the like a secret formula of product development efficiency, and and then we can talk a bit bit more about other subjects also also at the end. But let's start with this like uh, what we do, what we talk when we talk about uh, product development, product development efficiency. So we, I'll, I'll start from the the big picture, really, really from the big picture to get everybody to the same page of what we mean by product development in, in this context and on, on, on today, basically. So uh, uh, this, this whole product thinking, which uh, some of you might know already, is, is that the, like, uh, the core product is, is the one that companies normally see, especially when talking about product development. They, they think about the the core product as the the only product so so that's the part that they are developing and every day and, and kind of a see as a, as a part of uh, see as the product that is delivered to the customer but then on on our thinking and of course in this whole product thinking which isn't ours by or on, on basic but uh, comes comes from from other uh, other uh, uh, area experts is this that there's this actual product on top of the core product which has all of these like uh, uh, terms and conditions like everything that's adding on to the top of the product so basically what what do you need to have in order to be able to to use the product like a customer service could be something that that's uh, on top of the the actual product or or it like all the the guides to to how how to take the product into use the packaging st stuff like that that actually for the customer is the actual product so it's more than just the product that the, the product development is 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 developing but but it's 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 more and uh when we take this whole product thinking to the next level, there is this uh, augmented product, which includes like the the brand image and uh, then basically everything else that 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 compels the the value to the uh, uh, customer. So, and that that's good to understand that the product is more than just the core product it also has the actual product so so everything that is around it and then 
this augmented product, which is also like uh, including the brand image and including maybe the discussion forums or or YouTube channels to to know more about this this product could be thought as a, as a part of the augmented product. And then, so, so just to clarify and you know summarize what you're trying to say, uh, isn't it so that the whole product is actually the the experience of the customer around the product or service even? Exactly. I think that that puts it very well together. So it's like what the customer really feels when they they buy or use your product. Of course, this depends a lot what type of product we are talk, talking about. But uh, but this really really uh, tries to sh- sum it all. And uh, why this is important is that now when we are talking about efficiency, the product development. Uh, we should always remember that that the whole product is the thing that matters not that you are like very efficient on the core product if you don't manage to 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 create the actual product or or influence to the augmented product so so that's that's the ideology behind basically also what we're going to talk today and that's the reason we started with this one So another uh, topic, kind of behind all of this, this this might be something that you you all are really familiar with. But uh, basically, every new item a product development creates has this investment curve of added value. So so always when you are when you are uh, starting to think something new, there is this period of of like uh, maybe it's not prototyping but at least you start to think about the the idea a bit more maybe uh, do do some some kind of a thinking it might be sometimes you do a business case sometimes you do an experiment or or you just like draw it to the to the uh, wall or whatever you you try to kind of figure out with either whether this is a word of doing so on that point not much is yet invested to it but then when you make a decision that that you start to develop it in in portfolio management quite often then the investment really starts to go down so the money starts to to uh, uh, be spent on 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 developing it and uh, and that's not yet products producing any any value to to the customer or n- not at least any any profit to the uh, or revenue to the the cost uh, to the uh, company but then at some point uh, you finally get to release it uh, of course nowadays the releasing period might be like alpha beta commercial there are different ways to to release it and then it starts to to gain value and uh, and that's the point that that the the world starts to spread around and then you 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 start to kind of uh, m- gain more and more uh, profit out of out of these investments and then then after a cer- uh, certain period of time depending of course on the product the, there comes a point that the the investment uh, the the kind of a success starts to slow down and uh, you you tend to be in this like a end of a lifetime of a certain product or feature or release and and you need to do some decisions before the investment starts to actually sunk, sunk again because money is all the time spent even in here but the like a, a, a coming revenue then takes it to the profitable side of 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 things so this happens to all of the products all of the releases, all of the features every every company is, is, is making. So this is this is something that is good to keep in mind all the time uh, when when doing this uh, new uh, development in, in a company. And also it's important to understand that there there are different functions affecting the curve in different points and uh, this might not be a perfect it, it depends a bit on on, on uh, 
what type of company you are, that how much like a marketing and sales. Sometimes they are already involved in the very beginning or throughout the cycle. But what's at least true is that the product management should be involved in the whole a life cycle of the uh, investment curve, curve and also the product development. Of course, in the beginning, there are more. And now this means actually that the R&D department is, is the R&D department is more involved in the beginning of the of the curve and then uh, with the product maintenance in the later on the curve. And then there's something some mentions about the, the different portfolio uh, activities ongoing for the curve. But let's not go to to detail on, on those. But again, why I'm showing this, this, this affects to the, like, a, a, like the success of the company is, is coming from all of, all of these different functions and not only by, by like an R&D department here on its own. Good. One more thing, which I can't guess came obvious already from the previous uh, uh, pictures, was that in a company there's always many of these ongoing. It's not only one, but there are many uh, of these, which I, I tend to call duck necks, ongoing at the same time. So what's actually uh, me, what's actually important for, for a company is that on average you are really good on these. So, so not only that you have like one, one like a beautiful swan here, but you need to have all, all of the others also succeeding quite well in order to company to, to succeed uh, well. So, so that's the reason it is important to have all the practices and all the, all the, uh, like capabilities is like the company working as as well as possible to always like for the new features new releases to to become successful because that is the, the thing that actually makes it or breaks it for the for the product organizations good that was the the background information for for the for the productivity discuss so then what is productivity? Uh, it's actually quite uh, difficult question and, and, and there's so many different answers to it. So, so we try to simplify the questions to the very core of it. And in the very core of productivity is that you actually measure the ratio of output to input over a specific period of time. <clears throat> I think this is something that no one can, can, can argue against. So, so it, it's about like how much you provide, how much you use effort to it, and, and that's divided by time. Yeah, Henry, I must... Uh... I must uh, question you a little bit. Uh, when you're talking about output and input, uh, is it really output or is it outcome which is important? Or do we just uh, think productivity as an output? <clears throat> I, I, I guess you are, you are right uh, that, that the outcome uh, is... is definitely the the valuable thing but like a, I, I would maybe if if i'll answer this way that the, if we go to the very core of productivity without thinking anything about about the uh, anything about what we are doing the core is that hey you get output out but then in in many like in, in productivity in company context, output is actually more about outcome rather than, than output. But like if, if you really think in the very core of productivity as like a, how, how uh, like a, 
some machine type of a productivity. It's about like how many pieces it, it provides out and how much uh, energy you need to put in. So, so it kind of a, that's what I meant. Like if you go to the very heart of uh, productivity. But I do understand the logic that outcome is more important when you take it to the uh, company or organizational context. Okay, good, good. Yeah, you know my background. It's always out, outcome <laughs> or output. But hey, let's go forward. Yeah, and I think that's good, good uh, challenge because I think that's exactly the 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 point where we are coming into is that like it's. It's it's more than just output. It's not about like how many features you got out, but like how valuable those features were for the exactly. customer. Exactly. Yeah. Good. But yes, now we finally get to the topic of of, of today. So secret formula to productivity and product development. And uh, now, uh, like taking all of those previous uh, uh, slides together. And, uh, and also the good question Harry, Harry had is that uh, the product, the, the output uh, or outcome in, in what we just discussed in, in software product development, it, the, the part of outcome and output uh, what's seen is this product value. And, and, and that's about like how much value the products provide to the, the customer and also how much value it provides to, to, to ourselves, like a, a money, for example, how much money we get out of the product. But that's not all. And that's, that's exactly the, the kind of a big thing I want to really highlight today is that uh, in, in productivity in, in software and digital world, you, you have to think also about the effect to the next solutions. Like when you develop something uh, in, in a software world, you are always developing on top of existing. And, and that's the difference to, to many other uh, like, things yet that you, you, you measure productivity. If you, if you build, build a house to the, the forest, of course, there's, there's the soil where you are, you are grounding on it, but still like you don't have an existing house and you, you put no new, new uh, floors on top of it. Or as I want to normally use that, like uh, in a, in a, in a, with the complexity of the of the software world, you would always have like a big town where you need to put some new new houses in. So so you need to actually think about the whole town when you are you are creating something. And when you've created something, you need to actually then then make sure that that uh, it, it still has the room to do the next thing. So so in in software. Uh, product development, on top of the product value, you always have this effect to the next solutions. And that's divided with the activities to create the solution. And those are together divided by the calendar time. So that is kind of the secret formula. So this, if, if you understand at least the logic behind this, this helps everybody in the company to kind of start building more productive organization. And now need to ask you when, again that uh, uh, kind of clarification question. When we are talking about the productivity in software product development, we now mean that productivity in a company that does software product development itself. So did I understand that, that the case is a little bit different if we just hire somebody to develop us a application? Because then there's, this, there's no effect to the next solution in that, that case. I, uh, I, I, I see why that could be uh, true. But then we come to the but part is that like a, you, you nowadays you cannot create software 
without the need to update it at some point. So, so kind of, uh, I would see there is always this effect to the next solutions. Even you are you are buying it outside. It's it's a different type of the thing, uh, different type of 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 thing. At least you need to do some security updates once in a while. So, so you would need to take those into account. So, so. I think this is true with a bit wider than just the companies doing the software on their own. There's always also the, the basically all the companies that have software or digital assets in their uh, like a, a product or service they are delivering to the customer. This is true. Yeah. Okay, so. Wanted to uh, actually open up that what are these product value and effect to the next solutions? What those really contain? Uh, it's it's like having these things on a product value that like like discussed a bit more. It's what's the monetary value to to to. To us, like what type of uh, money we get from from the customer out of out of this uh, product. So that's that's of course a one thing. Then there is this lifetime value. With, of course, it depends a bit on the on the what we are doing. But but nowadays it is in a, in many industries something that if you are able to actually get from this product via service fee, fees or, or or something else this this lifetime value so so that's like on top of the when you deliver the product once uh, whether it's a software or, or more or, or physical product having software and then then you can get like a more val more value out of it uh, later on so that's that's about the lifetime value then there's this perceived value so what the customer actually now we can get back to the whole product thinking what the customer really gets out of this so what are all of things it, it depends a lot what we are doing but this perceived value is always like a, a very important part so how how well this uh, product or service actually solves the problem to the customer and how how much uh, the, the customer perceives that that like how much he or she thinks he, he actually gets and uh, uh, the va gets value out of out of this. So so that's part of the product value. And then every product somehow always affects to your brand. So there is always this effect to the brand on on all of the uh, products and deliveries, uh, even though the product on itself. Uh, isn't only the brand, but the brand is much more. But but there's always this this uh, brand effect on every every product. So so that's somewhat the product value uh, uh, thinking what what we have. But then maybe the the, the key thing what I want to highlight today is this effect to the next solutions because this is very very important. In everything we do in product development, there is always this effect to the next solution. So, for example, reusability of the solutions. When we create something, how easy it is to reuse some parts of the solution to a, to a next feature or a new release or even a new product. Because, like explained, you always are building on top of something uh, existing. There's always this effect to whether it's to code, to release, to test, to build. In in software world, basically every line of code you code you add, it, it always slows down a bit the, the development because it is a bit harder always to make the next line. And it is a bit harder to, to release, it's a bit harder to test, it's a bit harder to build. So there's always this 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 thing that like it always affects on. Uh, on how you how you build the next thing, you you always actually create, uh, or, or most often, let, let's say this way around, you you introduce some depth. You, you 
you cannot do everything perfectly. So, so you kind of uh, do some things that needs to be fixed or needs to be done according to the uh, according to the uh, like architecture. Or e- even you would would do everything according the like a current target architecture. But then every the, the world is changing. It might be that in five years the target architecture have uh, evolved, and then every line of code there is actually is depth, because you need to change it uh, to to match the the new uh, target architecture. So so basically, always you you create some some depth that needs to be fixed later on. And then the fourth thing on this effect to the next solution, this could be maybe thought mainly as a positive thing, is that like you always create these capabilities and competencies on, on creating the next one. So you can either document those well and do those well and, and, and make sure that next time you are doing something similar, it's easy. Or then if you don't do it uh, properly, then the next time is much, much, much harder. So, so, so there's always this possibility to build capabilities and competencies when you are creating something, something new. So on the output or uh, shall I say now outcome side, there is the product value and effect to the next solutions. So Henry, again, you know, if I think about the right side, effect to the next solutions, it, it clearly reminds me of uh, creating a, a minimum value, valuable product. And now I, I mean, building MVP just to test a market, you know, the way that the startups are doing it. So if you think about this build, measure, learn cycle, that's basically just to learn a little bit more about the customers, build a little bit better product, make sure that you're building the right product at the end of the day. But that's only, you know, about the right hand side of the equation. Isn't isn't that true? Yeah, I think that that's a good, good, uh example and good good thinking overall that like uh, those are definitely valuable things even you don't deliver anything to the customer so i think that's the that's the one side of this equation is that like uh, it the learning is important that's what what mvp should be right about yeah. like uh, learning about possibilities to then create the solution later on even though you didn't get any any product value so and that's the that's the reason there's a plus sign in the in the middle so so you can basically you could have both of the sides zero i'm not sure whether there is this uh, that the the right side is zero ever existing but maybe that could be uh, possible and you could still be a productive yeah, and and even when you deliver something to customer, it might be that the monetary value, lifetime value, perceived value, effect on the brand, they are all very very low, but the right hand side is big, and and you know you can kind of uh, get back your investment later on when you provide something more valuable. Exactly, exactly. Uh, of course, it would be really nice to have some some numbers to to these, but we haven't got that far yet. Maybe maybe someday we'll we'll try to create a a, a, a real metric to to go through these. But as a thinking tool, I, I found I've used this with with some uh, like a leadership teams of product organizations, and they've all seen this this to be very valuable because it so often goes that the, the business people sees the left side and the R&D people sees the right side. And, and they both should see the both sides. Of course, not to understand those fully, but, but it's important to understand that both of these exist because that's the way to, to really, really create productivity to the, to the product organizations. Okay, I have more questions for you, but let's go a little <laughs> Let's... bit further and then, then I will Good. maybe shoot them. Okay, so if, if you think about the activities uh, to, to create the solution, here's uh, what wh- this, this seems obvious that, hey, there's the, there's the coding, so, but I wanted to, to still have it here. So, so we kind of discuss this through because 
what's important here is that uh, there's other than just developing the solution and testing the, the solution on, on on this. So, so uh, first of all, of course, you need to have the activities to deliver the solution and 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 to fix uh, maybe some some things on the on the solution side. But what's again quite often understood that that these activities for the like understanding the customer needs and understanding and and ensuring like like the MVP uh, example those are something that that are or should be taught on the equation as an important things to when you are creating the solution that 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 you are actually using time also to understand that you do the solution well you do the uh, uh, like a right products uh, not only like do the do the products right. So so that kind of leads us us to the full uh, uh, formula what we've created about like having the product value, having the effect to the next solutions, and and then divide it by the activities to create the, the solution, and then that is divided by by calendar time, and 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 that kind of gives you the. The, the, the formula we've been thinking about but now maybe Harry if you had some some questions in mind let's let's go for those yeah I think the most difficult question for an organization is when they think about the productivity is to kind of agree on what kind of value they want to deliver Meaning that, okay, you can basically in this equation, right? You can focus on the product value completely. You know, let's do something valuable for our customers and ourselves as soon as, as possible. And that's basically, you know, what the business people want, right? And then we have the effect to the next solution is what you said, but the development uh, C is better, but okay. If we build this, we better build this right so that the next version is easier and faster to, to build. But I, what I see is that, you know, those two different goals, being productive on the product value side and being productive on the effect to the next solution side, they kind of collapse. You know, organization, organizations are not capable of agreeing and actually how much product value versus how much kind of capabilities and competency you want to build in a certain time frame. Or how do you see it? At least for me, it, it, it all, all often looks like, you know, we have silo between the, the business, like they say, and, and the product development. And, and that's the kind of the difficult part yeah. of this equation. It, uh, I, I'm, I'm totally... <laughs> Totally agreeing with you, and uh, maybe one thing that that would be worth to to mention is that uh, I feel that actually these bo both of these, but especially the effect to the next solutions, could be thought as like a, it could be a negative one, right? So, and I think that's one part of the 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 answer is that that it's not understood that there is always this effect to the next solution, which actually could be a negative one, because then what it means is that like a next time, even though you would like to focus fully on the product value, this, this is a cumulative stuff on this effective effect to the next solution. So, so it will become slower and slower and slower. So if this is like a, a like a, negative already so you keep on adding negative things here your productivity will 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 drop because of like the effect uh like is is cumulative i i, I think we would need to write the 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 uh, formula once again so to show that like uh, it actually accumulates uh over time not sure whether I answered to your, your question directly, but uh, I, I fully see that it's very hard, uh, very hard uh, discussion. And, uh, and and now I come back to the, the leadership team discussions that I've so, sometimes, few times witnessed that 
like talking about this in the leadership have already helped to understand that for, for don't want to blame anyone but like a, many times the sales people don't just don't just understand any of this uh so 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 it's it's easy to think about like product value divided to the activity so that this right side is fully fully forgotten so so that's the basically the reason this whole formula has been created to create the understanding on the both sides okay uh, how many times have you seen that you know a company strategy says something about this because product value if you just focus on the product value it's good on a short uh, uh short period you know you can focus on the on the revenue for example building something fast don't build the capabilities but you know that might you know save your company if if the runway is ending and you know you need revenue building something fast which uh, kind of lifts the value is, is good but then it might be that you you increase your product depth which is then the, the right hand side which makes you perhaps in the short term, uh, proceed a little bit slower, but then on the longer run, it means that you can actually uh, go faster, right? So is it then kind of a, a strategic decision that, that whether we should focus on product value or whether we should build these capabilities that uh, allow us to, to deliver faster and then with better quality you know, in the future? Your, your, your original question was that have have I seen it in a in a strategy that uh, I I have to say that I've I've seen it. Uh, I think like once written down in a strategy with the startup to really focus on the product value and and just like uh, do the minimum on the on the effect to the next solution and I think that's maybe something that many startups when they are uh, really looking for a high growth uh, might even do but I, i have to say that i'm i'm only one seen in this it in a, in a strategy but then overall ha- have i seen it in a strategy that there there would be something on the on the right side of things it's i've seen it on a on a on a technology strategy but not on a company strategy which kind of uh, proves the point right that that technology strategy might this this is seen as something that the technology should be doing and uh, and and company shouldn't care about and uh, my thinking is that, that this is definitely something that the whole company should care about I think so too. And then you already mentioned that it may be that, you know, some parts of the organization don't understand the right hand side. So why don't they understand? What's the reason? Is it problem with the with the communication or you know, who should make sure that everybody understands the right hand side of the equation also? <laughs> complicated and, 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 and extremely important uh, question. I'll, I'll try to answer this way: that uh, I I see that this like it's it's normal that humans always try to explain something with uh, with, with experience, and everybody have at least somewhat experience on 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 building houses or at least like they've heard or at least seen that how houses are built and and uh, or, or some other projects are, are done so so kind of a, i i feel that human mind is 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 like trying to explain like with the simplest possible so uh, like uh, explanation this 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 uh, phenomenon so 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 i do think that in many companies when you don't have a background of a, 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 like a software development the the kind of a 
easy explanation to everyone is that, hey, we are always building something from the ground up. So we have, uh, 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 when, when a new feature is done, you, you start from the uh, mm -hmm. empty slate and then you just start building on it and, and, and it's always the, 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 the same way. So, so I think that's the kind of a thinking the people who haven't been like really involved in the software uh, development exercises uh, think so uh, and then the reality is that there is always this existing platform or existing code base or or, or something that 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 you need to build on top of it and 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 that's something that's like not understood and not well communicated either because for the ones who are doing it it's it's so obvious so so who, then you had this question about like who should explain this um, i think this goes to the, the the organizational theory overall that if we all would be a bit more interested on what the other types of uh, functions in a company are doing the, the companies would work much 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 better so if the software development would understand customer service and sales and marketing better uh, it would be so much easier for those uh, people to, to to do their job well and then the other way around, if sales and marketing and customer service and all the other functions would understand software better, then it would be, uh, they, they would have much easier uh, kind of a environment to work in. So who, who should fix it? Maybe it's the, the, the kind of a company management. I don't have a better better answer. Unfortunately, yeah, I, 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 I fully agree with you. I work more on the product value side because I work with, uh, with product management and that business and and I see the problem that you know product people don't always understand that uh, you know how much of this right hand side they should care and also that how much effort actually is going to the right hand side so when the product development tries to be productive or the company tries to have a very productive software development, it's not always understood that, okay, which side should be optimized. Yep. And, and then I see on the, on the right-hand side, the same problem that, okay, sometimes perhaps, you know, people on the, on the tech side, they, they think that, you know, that the product people, they don't understand that we, we will have, you know, product debt or, or tech debt uh, and you know they build something very robust when actually it would be more important to build something fast yeah 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 i think there is this something in the in the culture overall that there's been so long the tendency to try to to hide the work on this right side like uh, let's fix it uh, the same time and let's not like mark it anywhere that we use the time for 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 fixing this depth and uh, and and building these pipelines and and what what they all we have on the right side that like it was invisible for so long and now when it's been realized that it's it's even more important now there's no way to try to balance this right that's that's kind of what you are saying is that like that's not a decision nowadays but it's just like somehow happening in the companies if i understood correctly what you what you are saying that it should be more of a like a decision when where you where you balance how much effort do you put to the effect to the next solution and how much effort you put to the product value yeah, what I'm after is really that uh, it should be a kind of common decision. Now we see that, you know, product people, they have their decision and then maybe tech side has their decision. And, and those <laughs> decisions may be a little bit different. Exactly. Yeah, I, I fully, then, fully agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I guess that that's, uh, that's the biggest problem almost that uh, should be fixed somehow on the on the management layer yep 
and that's that's kind of a coming back to the the origins of of this formula was that uh, this was done for the purpose uh, years and years ago when there was this continuous debate of are we productive in software development? And then the other side was saying that, hey, look how much we are building this this kind of a platform for the future. Another one was saying that, hey, look how little features you've been able to deliver. So, so, so there was this continuous debate on on uh, are we delivering value? And then uh, I had the luxury to, to be helping and coaching this company. So, so we got actually with the leadership team together to, to kind of uh, see the both sides. Both are right. Yes, there haven't been too many product value features coming out. There has been a lot of work for the effect uh, to the next solutions. Uh, but the thing was exactly what you Harry, Harry said was that like uh, it wasn't uh, 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 like a unanimous decision that hey we <laughs> we should put this much effort on this because the the other wi- side was saying that hey we need to only deliver the, the product value and not to care about the future because that the company was at the point that hey they would need to actually gain market and then the other side said that there's no point on 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 just trying to gain market if we don't do it well. So, uh, so that was exactly the, the purpose that this was done years and years ago. Kid, kid. So, how do we fix this? <laughs> I think it's my my success though would be to 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 take this this formula and, and really get into the discussion that, hey, is this true for us? Do we have these type of things? And uh, is there even ways to to measure some of these that, hey, uh, how do we see the monetary value, lifetime value? Is there some ways to, to understand the perceived value, the brand image, image type? And then also try to somehow make it clear that, hey, how much do we use for this, uh, like uh, next solutions and uh, uh, is it getting better? What's the cumulative things of of, of these? Like uh, the easy easy metrics on on like are we delivering as fast as we used to do? The are we doing the same amount of com- commits like uh, year over year or month over month and and and, and st- stuff like that? So so I, I would kind of start from there to investigate that that. Uh, uh, are these in balance and uh, at least to have the discussion that's that's the first thing to 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 start uh, creating understanding overall yes sure uh usually when we talk about productivity or efficiency or, or even effectiveness of the development we usually talk about these activities to create the solution and, and that's right uh, where the most uh, most problems are first seen that okay maybe we need to do these activities better or or more efficient anything to say about those now we have been talking about this value side which is which is always nice because too much we we concentrate on this uh, kind of the cost side but uh, anything you want to say about this yeah that that's a very valid point and uh, maybe in my thinking, this this like uh, thinking the lean ways are are on these activities to create the solution. So how how do we how do we figure out the waste out of these activities to create the solution? So so how, how do we how are we like effective on 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 understanding the customer needs, ensuring the customer need developing the solution uh, so 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 I, I see that like uh, many of the lean software practices are are something that could be used on on that side also so so that is definitely uh, something that you could do better and there are some percentages you can can always win from 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 there also. So, so it is a balance, and it is like, uh, like I said, it's divided by 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 that part. Uh, but somehow, I do feel that there is more on on the 
on the top on, on the equation that like you can you can get that side or, or let's say let, let's put it this way that this like you you, you started the, the question that like a, so often these activities to, to create the solution are something that that companies focus to is that I think it's it's much harder to to get like five percent out of those rather than in, improving five percent on the top so so that's definitely something you, you should continuously fix and continuously improve but uh, I think that the things on the top are not that much focused that they should be in in many companies okay yeah, just um, maybe one last question about these activities. When I look at these activities, you know, they are like they're like a waterfall. You know, customer need, then ensuring that it's really a customer need, developing, then testing, delivering, and, and then basically maintaining. You know, and that, that that's how it goes. You know, those are the activities that you need to do. Then it's just a question whether you know you have one team doing them or whether it's it is a, some kind of waterfall or you have the handovers you know from product manager to product owner to team to blah, 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 and this so long story short what is in your what, what is your opinion that how much it affect whether you have kind of this these handovers from one person to another versus one team which is doing everything or have you seen this kind of one team that uh, you know, does this all from customer need to, to delivering the solution? Yeah, there are two questions. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll answer first to the uh, the the f- first one that like uh, uh, that that's kind of a, what I mean with with lean is that you should find the waste. There's always waste, uh, definitely on and and most common waste in in software development is handovers. So kind of a, your your question was to the to the point. And definitely, if the organization gets more complex and and your your organization makes you to create lots of of uh, uh, handovers due to the organizational structure, of course, it is 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 is, is much less. Uh, efficient so uh, you, you definitely should should focus on 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 finding the wastes and, uh, and fixing fixing those but then to the question that like have i seen that there would be one team to to deliver all of these is that uh, i have seen yes uh, actually and let's exclude those uh... <laughs> Five guys startups. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was about to answer. That like uh, the startups definitely, uh, but then it 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 becomes more about like how many things of the full solution creation you can create inside the team. It's not possible. I, I would say even that if if the uh, company size uh, or development size grows over over twenty people. You, you you always start to have these at least some parts of it as a as a uh, uh, th- there's always some some handovers uh, and uh, it, of course dependent on 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 what you are doing so if you if you think about the uh, physical products there there I don't believe would ever be a team that could go and, and all the way to the production line to make sure that, hey, this, this actually gets delivered to the customer. And even in the SaaS companies, even though there's a lot of talk with, 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 of DevOps teams having it all, most often they have a cloud ops team or something that makes sure that the delivery to the cloud is, is, is done well. And at least there's a separate customer service handling the one and two tier uh, support. So, so there's always handovers. You cannot really, if you go over the, over the uh, startups, uh, then, then you always then will end up having handovers. And that definitely will affect and the whole point is just to kind of uh, try to to make those as efficient as possible and and uh, eliminate the 
the waiting times on, 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 on the solution creation and or, or throughout the organization. Good, thanks. And I think that going all that through would need a, another <laughs> webinar and maybe that's that's coming. <laughs> yeah, def definitely. And, and thanks for good and hard, hard questions. Uh, and I think that's kind of a good way to to, to sum it up. So so there is definitely uh, improvement on 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 product value and effect to the next solution and and activities to 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 create the solution. It's not so easy to to fix the the calendar time. So maybe that's something that that we will will stay there and. I have to actually say you didn't yet yet ask about it, but it really says calendar time, and I I feel that that is part of, uh, important part of the equation because of uh, it's not only about how many hours you use that's already here, but it's about like how fast you, you in a calendar time how, how many things you get out in a, in a year and not about like how many hours you've spent with with something that's that's part of the the, the upper part of, of of all of this so yeah which kind of explains also the handovers you know they don't take resources but when something is waiting it takes calendar time and exactly exactly time. yes all right so uh thanks a lot uh for for this uh, session. Hope you enjoyed. There will be a lot of new webinars coming to the future of webinar, future of product webinar series. Uh, feel free to, to send us feedback and uh, ask questions later on and also like uh, success topics. But it was a, a pleasant uh, time to, to spend with, with you, Harry. It was a very nice discussion and, uh, and we'll definitely get back to some of these, these subjects. Yes, thank you from my behalf also. See you soon, or at least hear you soon. All right, thanks.